Hey everyone, Ann here. We have been talking about the different masks that we can wear. So I went over five of them. We had the mask of perfection. We had the uh, mask of the overachiever. We had the mask of the people pleaser, the mask of the rescuer, and the mask of silence. So we had five different ones. Now there's probably more, and there's probably sub-masks to those, but those are the five that um, I'm, I'm going to use just for now. So you might be wondering, um, how do we develop those masks? How do we even, um, you know, come to have masks to begin with? And I can tell you right now, we don't set out and say, hey, you know what, I, I want to be a perfectionist or, you know, I want to be a people pleaser. Um, so I'm going to go over um, how these evolve because it's, it's quite fascinating. And this information comes directly from Bob Hamp and his Think Differently Counseling Center in Texas. Um, the guy is brilliant when it comes to identity and freedom and <clears throat> it's just, uh, really has, has changed my life, I know, um, since I've, I've started following his, his things. All right, so um, what we've got here is, this is the anatomy of a stronghold. This is how it begins. So we have an event. If you can see here, I'm rolling old school. Um, trying not to block my microphone. I'm gonna pull it over to the side. So you can see this and um, still pick up my voice. But we'll have an event that happens. And that event could be something that happened in the past like our childhood, or it could be something that's more recent, you know, maybe a bad car accident. You know, I, I had, um, say, the death of my husband five years ago. That wasn't a childhood thing. So an event happens, okay, and from that event uh, comes a lie. So there's a lie that's attached to an event. I'll walk through an example in a minute, but I just want to get you the, the foundational principles here. From that lie, then we come down and we find a way to comfort and protect ourselves. And then um, up here we've got people, um, how people respond. So we comfort and protect ourselves. Uh, we begin portraying ourselves out to the world um, and then people respond and it just kind of perpetuates the circle around and around. So um, for example, let's say um, I'll, I'll use something um, from my own past. So I have an event. I grew up with an alcoholic father he was absent um, emotionally um, and not not physically, but he wasn't he wasn't there. Um, um, you know, he'd be passed out or or whatever um, the case with the alcohol. So it was almost like emotional neglect. I would I would call it. Okay. So <clears throat> from there comes the lie. So that was the event in my life. The lie is that I have no value and um, I don't have any worth because my father. Um, chose alcohol over me. So that's the lie. So with the lie comes, um, you know, the comfort and protect. How do I comfort and protect myself? Um, well, I, I'm not going to get, allow um, anyone to get really close to me um, because if they really knew me, um, you know, I, I, it, that, that whole rejection thing. So it, um, you know, and I developed the, the people pleasing mask. Um, but I have also used substances um, over the years, uh, different substances to um, con um, comfort and protect. And, and those uh, don't work either because we're trying to fill a void with something um, that, you know, these things that we're trying to fill it with are not going to work. So um, I am going to stay like arm's length um, distance away from, from folks. And because um, I don't really want rejection. So if I don't get really close to anyone, they're not going to reject me. So that's how I portray myself out to the world. And so people respond to that. <clears throat> and so then it, it perpetuates itself. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to draw a line here. Now, everything above the line, we don't have control over. We don't have control over the event that happened. Um, and we don't have control over how people respond. What we do have control over is the lie and how we comfort and protect ourselves. So this is, this is where we would want to focus. And this is one of the things that, that we work on um, in <clears throat> my uh, 
freedom groups, my freedom training, and uh, when we talk about identity and, and this whole thing, is we look at this very closely, the anatomy of a stronghold, and work through this, um, and how to eliminate this, um, and, and how to eliminate this, and replace this with something um, which, which is, you know, the, God can really only fill a hole um, that's only meant for him to fill. And we'll try and fill things up you know, with, with food or drugs or alcohol, with performance, with overachieving, um, with isolation, you know, all the, the different types of people pleasing. We, we, it, it shows up in, in many different ways. So it's, it's not just um, the standard addictions that, that we see. There's different ways that we cope um, to comfort and protect ourselves. But hopefully this sheds a little light on you know how we get those masks to begin with. I when when I first saw this, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So let me leave you with that, so you can just kind of take in that information, and um, you know think about how your life may have been impacted some way with this model right here. Okay, thanks for listening. <laughs>